United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Superintendent of the Board of Education hereby accepts the minutes of the April 18, 2018 regular meeting as submitted. Second. Thanks, Mike. All in favor? Opposed? principals for joining us this evening, Mr. Heil, Ms. LaBianca, Ms. Elizabeth Pine, thank you so much for joining us. And like I said, quiz tomorrow morning. Okay, this is the budget hearing. This has been five months. And uh, Brad, we did notice your absence last time, so. But anyway. Don't get one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Monica's tonight. Yeah, right. right. Thank you for the notes. <laughs> so, yes. Where is she, anyway? Her husband uh, teaches on Tuesday night. <laughs> Believe me, we're, we're talking on Facebook right now. Hi, Monica. <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming, Brad. So here we are, our budget hearing. And next week, of course, is the vote. This is basically a review, much of a review, of April's presentation. So our current budget, $60,223,745, compared to last year, which is $59,272,555, thanks, Bob. And allowed by the state, we have a tax levy increase, which was determined by the state's formula at 1.95, which isn't too bad, because that's almost 2% per change. Now, we, I want to thank Lynn for this. Um, quick slide out to Newsday. It shows that we budget well. As Lynn said when we discussed it, it gets us more bang for the buck the way we budget. And if you look at it, we do pretty well with our amount of students. If you compare it to districts of similar size and similar needs, Mount Sinai does pretty good with their budget. Um, we'll be going into the future about our meeting with the auditors from New York State, which was an entertaining meeting. And I'll summarize it in basically a paragraph. And it's written that we budget very conservatively. And we respond, well, I wonder why when you never know what you're going to get in state aid, right? <laughs> you're not going to budget conservatively. Um, but that was a lot of the discussion. So looking at this, and I thank them for sending it, we do pretty well. I talked to some of my friends in other districts, and uh, we get a lot. Of, we do get a lot of bang for our buck. We have a lot of successful programs, and if you look at our budget compared to a number of the others, a lot of numbers, we do pretty well with this. Also, uh, 
Want to back up? Go back. Okay. Many of those schools who have larger budgets or a uh, lower uh, average cost per student, you have to look at this in terms of what their foundation aid is. Foundation aid does not help our district at all. We don't fit within the uh, definition very well in that. They we also have a low, we have a lower, it sounds strange, but we have a lower wealth score because of a higher wealth index in our community than some of the other schools, and that defines some of their age overall. So it's really when you look at our number of costs per student, that directly builds the house. We're not getting a lot of aid and certainly not a lot of foundation. And we're talking today also, we would get, I received my emails, tons of offers for grants. I constantly go to my directors, are we eligible? No, you're not popular. Everything they send, because of our wealth level, we're not eligible for grants that other districts enjoy. Can you go back quickly? Back, Brad? Yeah, so I can take a picture of that. I'm send you a copy of Newsday? No, I'm only Is that a spy camera? Oh, okay. Okay, this is a review. If you're here in April, I'm sorry, but a lot of it we have to review it for the budget. And I'll be talking about basically the main driver or the detail that affects the category the most. So the first, the Board of Ed and Central Administration. That, was driven, that decrease was driven by less legal expenses this year. Um, we've enjoyed less hearings, uh, less use of our attorney, and that's, that's a good thing. Central services, however, with a district-wide insurance, our district-wide liability, um, maintenance grabs and such, with increased student accidents and incidents, that liability rate goes up. And we also in that category is the additional guards we added after February. Again, first they're unarmed, they're armed now, and that's the increase in that second category. <clears throat> Career construction supervision, that increase is due to professional development and, and materials for the new reading program that will be coming in next year. Pupil personnel, which is special education, you'll see that decrease. However, I constantly warn one student moving in the district with high needs, and that can blow that up. We have had students moving in or moving back to this district from other areas that cost us 100 to 150,000 for that student. Pupil activities, whether that's written, that's a number of things. The co-curricular STEM program, which we share with Fort Jeff to go to the campus of Stony Brook, where our kids meet with college professors to learn STEM. Um, that course, it is my time to visit Santa Laval. I asked Paul Castellano from Port Jeff to share that visit with me. He had to turn it down because his relationship is at risk right now <laughs> due to the bond in Pennsylvania in Port Jeff, which uh, Santa Laval and the mayor were against, so they didn't have much of a chance to pass, and it did. And they had exchange work. I'll be traveling alone unless some of my board members want to come along. Okay, sure. Okay, so, and along with that category of pupil activities, not just the Sony program, the athletic trainer is now in this category removed from salaries, correct? Correct. Right. So it looks like a jump, um, but it's just another category of places to jump. Pupil transportation, we tell you every year, we plan on a 2% increase. The actual expense, transportation has its own CPI, which we should get around May 15th, correct? And then the census, I hope then drivers said, we used to work with hosts on the census. We dropped that support, we do it on our own now. Uh, that saves some money. And I hope then drivers said, are self-sustaining. Employee benefits, that's kind of out of our control. The largest one, of course, benefit is health insurance. And we plan on 10% increase. And you can see that there. Debt service, our loans, and leases are expiring. And as you know, just with your household things, as the loan goes on, your interest goes down when they get near a 
we totally paid off in a few years. The summer school, special ed, according to students IEP, they have to be educated over the summer, so they don't regress from where they are when the school year ends. And then salaries is an increase next year of 1%. So what does all this mean? The difference is, Budget at 60 million, 203, 745. It's an increase over last year of $931,220. Or a 1.57 increase over last year. And this is what everybody uh, is probably waiting for. Let's look at again the numbers. A lot of them I just told you what the budget was, that were appropriated for fund balance, or total revenues. Tax levies bring in at 40 million 2017. All of this, and then what it comes down to for the average home assessment, and I always uh, joke with Linda about that, do we have any average homes in Mount Sinai? And she said, no, she said, yes, we do, for that assessment, and some are less for various reasons. So that made me feel a little better. But what that means is basically a $15 per month increase. Now, this is in my superintendent's address. We're doing things backwards right now, but this is extremely important. Meaning an exec, we're discussing that there's a lot of confusion in the neighborhood over this. So we can't repeat this enough, we can't say it enough, what this is. At the beginning, all three of you, saw a picture of an athletic field, okay? That's what we are project what our current one and only turf field will look like once this is taking place, okay? One field, the current field that's now 15 years old, I don't think you'll find another turf field on Long Island that is 15 years old. Why? Because of the condition, first of all, it's one of the originals, they make better fields today, and we worry about the impact rating when a child, an athlete, hits that turf. And I have to tell you, you walk on that field and you see scenes and how flat and hard that is, you get a little scared. Watching, uh, having the privilege to see our girls uh, lacrosse last Friday, followed by our boys lacrosse, I do cringe when they go down and hit it. I do cringe because that is some shot. They take the shot from the player, the impact from hitting that turf is the second move. And we have, as I told you before, our liability's up because we have a lot of more sports injuries. And I don't think you could rule out the condition of that field as a factor somehow. But it really needs replacing. So, can you tell anybody in any district, how old is your field? 15 years. Are you kidding me? And they'll say 10 to 12 max. So, what can happen this year? That field can be condemned. And we have. Look at every season of every sport and how well they perform here. And that, that's just an injustice to our athletes and our teams. Not to mention safety back. So the one field, the turf field, will be replaced. The track around it is crumbling. It makes sense to do both at the same time. It itself is not safe. Now, if you look at the field, you'll see that with our field events around the uh, back sides of the track that are filled with weeds and gravel and it's a terrible appearance and doesn't need to be there. The battery club can be located outside and when I get back to the picture I'll show that to you. Again, why do things in piecemeal? Our bleaches are 25 years old. The pe is the press box about the same year? 25? 25? 25? Okay. Okay. Pay for that press box. It's actually it's not as old. How old? I believe it's like 17. 17. About 17. Okay. It looks good because it's wild. Correct. It's a little shaky. It's a miracle. It's not the age compliant. Right. And as Lynn just reminded me, our bleachers are not ADA compliant either. So the plan is, I'll get, I'll mention more detail, i get to the picture, but the bleachers are going to be new bleachers. We played with and brainstormed many scenarios with our architect a few weeks ago and said, can we use the existing bleachers and add new ones? He said, the bracing is different, the color is different, it would not look good. 
So we're getting all new with a, a bigger seating capacity. Now the other thing is nets within the turf. If you visit other schools, you'll see that around the field are high nets. So you can use the track. You got them to say this to you? That you can use the track and do track events while people are performing on the field. <coughs> Makes sense. Pete? We're just going back to the bleachers. That'll also help us create a capacity for graduation. Because graduation is very popular today. No. People down low are going to be fighting each other. So more people on the stands. Uh, Great point. Much yeah, the people are down below along the fence because they can't go out forever. Problem. That's why they get here at 2 a.m. in the morning. Congratulations. <laughs> um, so, and then there are sidewalks. You'll see the paving around the field will be different. There are sidewalks going to those events that were once on the track, uh, into those areas. We're trying to make that area, that bottleneck, when you turn and you go in towards the high school, where the field is on your left, where parents will stop and talk, where parents will drop off and stay. And that's a pretty dangerous place and, and people walk there. So we're trying to undo that safety hazard and create a concrete plaza with a fence. Okay? Um, and here's the new edge, just like I mentioned before in that other category, the security that we have now, is we know the need for a security perimeter fence. I have some pictures I'll share with you. And the thing is, we do feel safe with our new guards. But anyone who did an assessment, the uh, FBI um, community member who was nice enough to spend time with me and walk around, he said, even before guards, the perimeter must be safe for the campus. So the board realizes that, and um, we just met and discussed uh, the fencing. And the fencing, we'll, you'll hear more about it, but we're at least concerned with the attractiveness of 25A versus the uh, environment and what it looks like, the picturesque side on North Country Road. So it's visually appealing, and we don't change the look of it. So that's, that's going to be a reality. So what does all that come to? Do you remember when, Brad, I'll give you a quiz. It's five million now, what was it before? Remember when we first put this? Up, uh, have a project. It was like in the fours, I think. Yes, 42. Okay. Now, you take the fencing off, where are we? 42. Okay, but we realized we had that need, and it has to happen, like we realized with the doors. This is money we already have. This is, yes. Now, here is those at home. <clears throat> this is very important. This is money you have paid. It's in the bank account. Savings not cost you anything more to fix the high school roof. I wish I had thought of it earlier. I would bring in pictures of the art rooms underwater and other areas, pupil uh, special ed areas, guys underwater. It's not good. So high school roof. You saw that we're discussing the fields and have a brand new turf field safety. Security, perimeter fencing, safety, it's in the bank. Will not cost you a dime. It's proposition three. Proposition one is the budget, it's 60 million. Proposition two is the library, which they determine that number. You vote on that every year, those one and two. But three is the capital project, that <clears throat> will not cost you a penny, any of that. And Proposition 4, we'll discuss more as we get into uh, the capital uh, fund reserve fund. Yeah, one, one comment over here that by doing this way, it is aidable that we will eventually get some money back from state aid. Right, aidable. Mike, was that your comment? No, I was going to pay back over what you said for the, the few in the room. And, you know, maybe we get 1,500 voters show up to try to get the message out. Like Pete said, Gordon said, this is Proposition 3. It's $5 million, but it's $5 million that we, as a district, already have in our fund balance, some might say savings account. It's already the community's money. It's there. We're just transferring it from the fund balance to this capital project to get this work done immediately, and we get aid back on it. So again, some people might go and say, oh my god, $5 million? Why am I spending $5 million? You're not spending already in our savings account, 
and just transferring it over to get these projects done. That's what the way we're looking at, Gordon, is to look at this over the past couple of years, there have been a lot of different things that we've tried to do to save money, to reduce costs. That's what adds up when we do it. That money should go to the community. It goes to the community when you do a project like this. <clears throat> These are things that have to be done. They're either, you cannot use the facilities if we don't do this work. So why pay interest on it as a loan, a bond, when you have the money? Exactly. We can move on this sooner than later. It is a method by which we can get money that the community has saved to do its own work without taking the loan. And we can be aided and get the, a lot of that money back from the state over time. Right. What would we estimate that we can possibly get back? They say it can be upwards of 60%. It has to be associated with a building. 60% is a 63% could be a high mark, but so let's say it could be 50%. Uh, you do get that money back, it's not all in one check, it comes back over time, but it is found money. It comes back into the program and continues to be used. So this $5 million with Aidable becomes a long term program enhancement because over time you keep plowing it back in. It's like you get to use the money over and over again. Good point. And in addition, wait for the bond. Even yeah. if you approve it tomorrow, that leaking high school roof, and by the way, when we get to it, it's only one third being replaced. One third. We can't wait two and a half years when it's leaking like it is. When that bill could be condemned tomorrow, you can't wait two and a half years for that. So, why would you wait to secure your perimeter of your properties? That's security that can't wait. So in addition to what Bob said, that money comes back to us. It's not like, okay, we got it in the account, it's spent, it's all, it's all gone. It eventually comes back. And it is the taxpayer's money, Steve. We'll also be saving on the inflationary cost to assume you do with the less it's going to cost you to do these items. But once the contract is, you wait two so years, the there price of the work, that's not going to be a $5 million project, that will be a $6 million project. Right. Thanks. On That's top of point. it, interest. Why pay interest on something if you have the money? No tax increase. Zero percent is good. Absolutely. No tax Great. Okay, and this will kind of explain uh, what we're talking about, what Mike uh, Riggio was mentioning before about the fund balance. We'll point it out. I just want to point out quickly on the top of the chart, we have now for you shown this slide here to show you where we're going. If you look at this year under 1819, as I mentioned before, the 1.57 is lower increase than the prior two years. Right? You had 2.29, 210, or 157, the smaller increase. And again, uh, we've also been going this rough ride with us, the appropriations. In March, we thought before we got our real numbers in, before we got the 209 additional in state aid, before we knew we had seven retirees, which is more than we even planned on. And the great thing that the board did working out with the MSTA is working out this incentive so we can predict into the future how many retirees we will have. We have seven, we know we already have four next year, and then shortly thereafter, we'll know when we get the third year out to help us plan. So, it, and I, I'm evidently getting seven this year, which is quite a savings. It's a great thing that the board did with you, the work is working on. So before all that, we started in January, you should know this, Brad, at 1-1, March went up to 1-9, and now we're down to 1-4 because we had, um, but look down below, and this is Mike was saying before, and Bob, we're not going broke. In January, February, my superintendent's message dealt with how does the fund balance grow, what happens? It's basically unspending, not on purpose, 
but prices come in less. You don't spend, someone didn't want what they ordered. It didn't cost as much as we thought. And over three years, it saw the fund balance room. And look at where it was last year, the end of last year, 16 7. So by the, there you see the transfer to capital project, the five million we're talking about. Now Bob spoke about Mike, Pete, everybody. That's the five million we're transferring with your permission to move your money here to pay for those things we just pointed out. So with that out, and in addition, because we have the money, setting up a capital reserve the first year at 750. Because again, we don't have a bond, things could happen. It brings it down, with those moves, it brings it down to half 8% in one year. And I said to Linda, we're gonna get another letter from the state. Because the following year, and we joked with them about this, because when we started spending on it two years ago, I got another letter, you're at risk. Even though we're above 4%, we're at risk. So the idea is we get very close to the 4%, and then we go under the 4% in 1920. But again, you're gonna have more retirements. Um, you don't know what the A is. Hopefully, you might see that, the, not necessarily hopefully, but the district might be decreasing in enrollment. Uh, we have two large bumps that should be moving out of high school in two years. And uh, things will start changing three to four years out. Bob and Peter. The most important piece will be that Proposition 4 going forward. Capital project is for an immediate need, an emergency need. The cap reserve is something we've had. We haven't had one in two years. Establishing a capital reserve sets us forward strategically going ahead. It's very interesting to see um, the 750 that drop, that will drop into the capital reserve with the creation of it becomes an excellent foundation to build on as we are able to achieve continued savings going forward into our, um, with, with our salaries with, and that's the purpose of working out a contract and a retirement incentive that allows us to move that way. I think it's coincidental, I don't believe in coincidences, that 750 is approximately the area that we're looking at savings when you drop out the uh, high earners this year, that's the same number. This means we're thinking forward, we're using that money to go forward and every Thing that we can plow into that for savings into the future, capital reserve is important to use because when you need to do regular projects, when you need to take care of your facilities, you do so. If you wait, you pay more contractors, you pay an interest, and you are required to do more work because you waited too long, what was a repair or a minor renovation becomes a major problem. This is that proposition four, and why it's important is it is an investment into the future as to our facilities. The same way we invest into our students and program that you're seeing in the capital project. And as that money comes back to us in state aid, that is continuously investing into our program and into our students. And then, as Bob just called that, here's Proposition 3. Proposition 4 was Bob describing right here. Now, the thing with that, too, is the money's there. We don't have to spend it. If you don't need it, it does not have to be spent. You don't have to spend all of it, okay? So, because, again, as one of our board members approached, wow, I can't, we can't afford to spend that $5 million. We're gonna go broke between that and the budget. We can't do it. Yes, you can. We're showing you how we can do it. And that is wise. I have, and I've been hitting it too often lately, a fund that I have for my house repairs that, you know, for major emergencies and things that you have to borrow for. And you got to do it now. You put it off. Small problems get to be bigger problems. If I don't do a driveway now, what's, how much will that driveway be next to? And that's the same way that we're talking about. So, it, you know, it's wise to have that you don't have to spend it. We're not going on a spending spree. But keep in mind, I'll get it right to you, Proposition 3, 
proposition four, we should see decreases over the years, the next three years. But we're finding things where going wrong now in some of our buildings that we can't wait for a bond year. So we asked for pu the public for permission to borrow and ship the five million. We asked for the public for permission on Proposition 4 to just put this in reserve, not necessarily spend it, but in reserve. It allows the Proposition 4 board and allows us to take the savings Bob referred to and actually have a plan in place going forward, whether it's a three-year plan, a five-year plan, and then we can have a dedicated stream of money going into the fund and at the same time spend it according to a logical plan based on the facility manager needs or what we might determine board determined we need. It allows us to take the community's money without increasing taxes and actually utilizing it and we're paying it forward. Basically we're paying it forward to the community and it's very prudent and it's a very conservative way of managing our money. The community's money. Thanks Pete. Thanks Bob. Okay, this is the thing that is ugly. We don't like to talk about it, but should the bond not pass the budget? Too much bond. The budget should not pass, what do you do? You have to, you took, this I mentioned before. Here's our tax levy this year. That's what it brings in on 1.95. It's bringing in 40 million seventeen zero four nine. Last year, our tax levy brought in 39.354.6. What's the difference? $766,589. I said, why are you showing me that? Well, this is how the formula works for a contingency budget. You see the difference, and the board would be faced with cutting $766,589 if the budget doesn't pass. It's based, you see the formula right here. Now you say, okay, it doesn't pass. We're almost, um, you know, it's, a, it's three quarters of a million dollars. What do we cut? Some of these are minor. And you know, you know supplies you do for extra products is minimum. Even if you cut extra products, that's minimum money. Class of supplies, not a lot of money. Equipment from the budget, not a ton of money. Now what is money? How do you get to seven hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars and save it? Really simple and it sounds ugly, but it's staffing and programs. That's what it comes down to. In my former district, we cut four million one year, and it was heinous. It was the middle school and elementary school music programs and teachers. Ten English teachers were cut. We went up a nine period to an eight period debt. And walk around an elementary school without music. Not a very pleasant thing. And then when I left, they're just starting to try to get fifth grade music back. And it's a horrible thing, but that's true. You've got to, that's a big pile of money you've got to save. What program are you going to cut? Okay, let's try to cut bodies. Let's, let's set up minimum class sizes. What are your AP classes going to be allowed to have? Honors classes, electives. Are you going to set a minimum, as some districts I know set it at 15? And you don't let those other opportunities run for kids? Those kids who take? Six, eight, nine, ten AP classes. What do you do? So it's not a good thing to think about, not a good thing, but you have to be prepared, and by the way, you have to prepare, right, Linda? So you have to look at it in a long and short of it. Even if you cut sports, a lot of people say, cut music and sports. You're not going to get that amount of money for sports. You're going to look at coaching fees to get to that amount of money? Never. Number what? They're contractual. Yeah, contractual. So that is a contingency budget. Not pleasant, but that's how it works. I finally understand it. And it's all based on tax levy. Can't use this year's tax levy. Got to go back to the last ones. But our budget costs this much. Cut that one. And that's that's the long and short and the ugly part. Of it. So one more time, who should all say it together? No. Proposition one is the budget. Sixty million twenty-three thousand, which is the smallest hike in three years. Fifteen dollars per month. Proposition two, the libraries. 
These happen every year. Proposition 3, the capital project, you heard the board members speak to it. The one for 4.2 is bribing members to 5 because we had secure perimeter fencing. And I will be saying more about that in a few minutes. And then Proposition 4 is the capital reserve, like Pete just called it, playing it forward with that money. I call it like that emergency fund in your house when you need the money, you got it there if you need it. And the community has control over that because the board has to say, like, we got to have a plan. Here's our plan, community. Can we spend this money on it? Tell us no. We don't want that money spent on it. That's up to the community. It's your money, the five million, and the capital reserve. And those are additional votes. We showed you the chart. We're not going broke. You know, you have to understand this. This is something different. Things that are needed now, we can't wait. It involves security, it involves repairing your buildings. And um, I just, when I think of our high school, one third of the roof leaking like it is, I can't help but think of Port Jefferson and their bond not being approved and their buildings are crumbling as we speak. Crumbling. We can't have that happen. So the four propositions, four, and they're all good ones, needed, security, repairs, all of them. And we need people to vote. Okay, now that's the budget. Hearing part, we return to the regular meeting at this point, or do you want to get done with it? Just the rest of it? Do we have a motion to adjourn the hearing? Did you want the money uh, to not put you the take the I think it's up there. I'll grab it. It's not. It's not. You just give me your email. I'll send it to you. Oh, okay. Because I put it. Okay. Then I can keep going. I put the key in the box. I think that's where you want to come down. I can keep going. The district clerk says yes. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. You got the other one? Let's go back to the field. That's it. Okay, this was on when you came in. You heard me speak a lot about this. So, what I have to point out is, if you have driven by the field lately, and what you're confronted with, the track areas and the gravel and the weeds and the rest, and from the track, this is clean. The end zones are clean. These events aren't gone forever. They're placed in another area off the track and off the turf field. This design is what we want our one and only turf field that exists presently to become. And it can. But you can see extra sidewalks, extra concrete. And what did I just show you in that capital project slide? I showed you replacement of our turf. Right now, I can't help it, but I'm watching the games. Great kids, great athletes on that turf. Reminds me of the Astro turf I left on my patio for too long. That's what it looks like. It's about as hard as that. Then, the next will go around the field so you can use the track as the game progresses on the field. New bleachers, ADA compliant. It's moving the events out here. Okay? But this is improving and replacing what we currently have before it's condemned. Pete? Or just going back to the netting. The netting yes. is important really for practices more so because there are more practices. <clears throat> right now, the teams, they have to juggle. We have an incredible track program, track and field program. And the coaches actually do a very good job managing use on the field and the track. But if we have netting around there, that's not going to become an issue. And it will help our students because a lot of times we have the general practice and the kids are here to seven or eight o'clock at night and not home studying. So it's really, it's kind of what everyone else is doing. So it will help us utilize these fields better. In one practice sense, you're absolutely right, Pete. You know, when I watch a track meet, I've got kids to be supervised here. I have kids to be supervised over here. 
I have a kids to be supervised out there. So having them in one area makes sense as well. <coughs> okay? So, yes. Right. So with the, where the track and uh, events are going to be located, relocated to, Right here. What is that's the area behind the middle school now? Yes. So th that's open grass at this at this time. Space built, is it? Right now the events are going to be put back. But yeah. This kiss is there, so basically you know, like like the high jump. Right. Gonna move, that's over the pole vault, so it's going to move from that particular area there over there. It's not going to really impact that field. It's not like it's okay. going to take the whole field up. Okay. It's just moving the stuff that's over there and allow them to also maintain the use of those end zones, you know, maintain the end zone mm -hmm. better, and it'll be for safety purposes too. Okay. Yes. How soon will you finish the project? If it's approved, how, how soon? Like, how soon uh, would that happen? How soon if the project can be completed if the project is oh, approved? How, so uh, we, we we're hoping, I was talking to the football coach the other day, uh, and they're arranging some of the schedule for more away games, so maybe, we would hope by the fall that this could happen. Um, but again, the first thing's first. Let's pass this proposition yeah. and move that money over. And then we put the pedal to the metal to get that field happy by the fall, hopefully. Does this affect at all updating bleachers for the baseball field to be within compliance, or is that completely no, separate? No, that baseball field remain what we are talking about as far as the field goes is give the girls varsity softball, a nice field over here instead of the Oklahoma Dust Bowl that they but currently the play. will stay the same. Yeah. Okay. I, I like to go to girls' softball games, but I have to wash my face a lot when I'm done. <laughs> Looks like I have a good tan. Now, this is, check the lack of perimeter security and fencing. Let me go, take you through the neighborhood now on a little journey. Boys and Ivy goes in town. Yeah, that's the key clever. Yeah, it's the boys and Ivy. <laughs> well, post and rail. You know, we, when we, we all talk, and then when you're in front of the high school, and I, I've said this to Frank a million times, and when you're over on the North Country Road, 1992, people never expected seeing what we are seeing now and dealing with it, unfortunately. No one asked for this, this is reality. But post and rail doesn't hack it anymore. And this is along North Country Road. It's extremely vulnerable. Even our attorney came in today, uh, went up North Country, came in the main entrance, he goes, I like a guard at the gate. But he goes, what about the back? <laughs> you know, he, he did say that. Right. So we said, it's done. North Country Road. I got, got posts. I got posts. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this is um, on uh, 25A side. And we didn't make any of this up. I saw at Southern Shed. We, uh, I really saw a great how people cleared the grass and the weeds and made a beautiful entryway to their gate onto the field across from the school today. I wish I had that picture. Another 25A side. Now, a lot of us are worried and the board knows. We, I had a problem with a homeless guy last year who was making his home near the post office. So we always stop and we we're just walking on to the elementary school playground. More posts, not posts, think of now these are problems too on our, we're damned if, this is what I call damned if we do, damned if we don't gates. On the perimeter of the property to our roadways. Now, we try to anticipate field day. We had our armed guard there. Parents weren't happy with the back gate being shut. I opened the back gate too and put one of our guards on it. But then we got complaints because they could not park the car on the side streets behind the field and walk through. What are you doing? I want to park in the neighborhood. I, I can walk right onto the field there. And we try to lock this and you do get complaints. You know, the board for years has always felt this is the neighborhood, this is the heart of the community neighborhood school. And they should enjoy it in the grounds, but as we've been saying, 
Times have changed. You have to lock those gates. So again, again, in your sleep, proposition one and two are the norm. The five million capital project, let's get those fences fixed and all of the other things that turn to the Proposition four, okay, we need, the money's there, not costing anything for three and four, we need you to vote. We need these things to happen and we can't wait. That's it. Um, join me on the stage for the rest of the meeting. I want to excuse our APs and thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, thank you so much.
we felt what I felt was appropriate. Um, we want to be an initial date matured and, and meet them as have an endorsement that covers that with a particular level of insurance carrier that would meet our approval. This did change the cost a bit, and to be reasonable with them, we're the ones effectively uh, putting that out there, uh, and that reflects a slight increase. You'll see at 4821, uh, I believe it was 42 previously. 4166. 4166, 42. Um, so, we wanted the proper insurance that covers our district, that our district is not the direct uh, uh, insurer. We really, we really kind of put it through hoops, not intentionally, but the board had a right to make sure the district was well protected. Sure. And uh, we feel confidently that we are now. Okay. And it went out to rebid to yeah, everybody. Rebid. Everybody went out to everyone. It was, it was fully, fully, fully rebid. Right. Okay. Right. The closest one we're at is at sixty dollars an hour, and they would have had to advertise for guards. I see. Okay. I don't know if any of you've met any of the guards, but they are uber professional. They are there all the time. The poor man who's now with their little canopy is, you know, working his tail off getting everybody's license. You know, I walk this campus a lot. I always like to stand and watch and make sure that that those things are going on, and they are going on. <coughs> upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby accepts the resignation for retirement purposes of Geraldine Fallon, an English teacher, effective June 23, 2018. I'll second that. Thank you, Beth. I would just like to add a comment that uh, Jerry's been working in the high school teaching ninth grade English for a very long time. Very tough, very professional, uh, a wonderful teacher. My children have had her. I worked alongside her as the librarian, and she would come up often with her students, and they worked really hard. So I personally am going to miss her for the district and for our children, and I wish her the best. I would join in those comments. I think there are many students who fear going into <laughs> Jerry's <laughs> class, and after going through her class, often getting into very good schools because of her assistance and work with them, they come out and are just so happy to have been in her class. Uh, that's a true teacher. That's someone who has a calling. They really show the children the path. And this is going to be a very difficult separation, both for her and us. I wish her the best, but it is a loss for the district. Any other comments? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ed? Retirement. Retirement Amendment, Patricia Corley, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby amends Patricia Corley's retirement date to be effective June 30th, 2018. It was just a minor uh, uh, correction on her retirement date, uh, changing the effective date. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Mike, instructional? Sure. Uh, substitute teacher resolved upon recommendation of superintendent of the Board of Education hereby approves the following appointments. Gabriella Consciaccio, Katrina Cowley, and Stephen Pichan.
fall, winter, spring coaches resolved by the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby approves the following appointments. And it goes on and on and on. Okay, no second. second. Thanks, Mike. Any comments? All in favor? Opposed? Back to committee on special ed. Actually, this is an educational committee on special education resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of the board of education has no objections to the following special education recommendations and approves the authorization for the funds to implement special education programs and services consistent with such as this. I'll second that. Thank you, Ed. Any comments? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Next item. <coughs> Sure. Memorandum of Agreement. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education hereby approves the Memorandum of Agreement with the Mount Sinai Teachers Association dated May 2nd, 2018. I second that. Thank you, Pete. Any comments? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Next item. CSEA. CSEA Holiday is resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education hereby approves the following CSEA holidays for the 2018-19 school year as listed. Second. Thank you, Mike. Any comments? In favor? Resolved 
Call the recommendation of the Superintendent of the Board of Education hereby rescinds the March 21st, 2018 motion to award the bid for armed security guards for protection, pro protection security. Second. Thank you, Lynn. Any comments? We explained this earlier, so I think everybody knows why we are rescinded. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Lynn, bid awards? Bid award, armed guards. Results upon the recommendation of the superintendent of the Board of Education hereby awards the bid for armed security guards to Pro Protection Security, the lowest responsible bidder in the amount of $48.21 an hour per guard for the 2017-18 and 2018-19 school years. Said services shall commence May 9th, 2018. Mm -hmm. Second half. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. So we are locked into this uh, amount for next year, including through June of 19 as well. So that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Um, on a side note, I, I was looking at the obsolete equipment and it gave me a uh, thought. Um, I don't know, Gordon, as far as I know, who will be to Columbia next year in the meeting. And I know we have, I'm sure there's lots of journeys, texts, and things that are not going to be in the schools. Um, I know there's services out there that buy back. There are companies that buy back money, so we need to look into it. Yeah, buy back those textbooks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they want to buy them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We just see, sorry, we have a question on the floor. We just need to vote. Any okay. more comments? That's okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Oh, okay, let's go with this. I like to say it when so, I have the idea. <laughs> so, yeah, we. Uh, I just wanted to again thank you for the stock of the items that you're putting. If you get any extra ones to strategically place, um, good spot are your AED machines because you could fit your tourniquet and your stock of lead right in your AED that's machines. Great idea. Because most of the time that's only really used for a shotgun type blast. Right. So you're grabbing your AED most likely because you're going to probably need it. So you have your go bag right out of your nurse's office. You take your AED and it has the kit right in, right in the side of the AED container. And you can also place one right in your security booth, like in the school, or not security booth here, but where the reader booth is. And it's three simple places that any staff member can grab and bring right to the location if needed. It's just three easy spots. Thank you. So it's just that's a suggestion, great. but it works out pretty nicely. And as Mr. Brasil mentioned earlier, uh, Staff development is going to happen at the superintendent's conference days. It's pretty early, uh, in August, early September. So stop the lead and the active okay. unit training are part of that plan. So uh, that'll be good to remember for us. And I had one other question. Okay, sure. The night of the National Honor Society, there were three away varsity games, and yeah. a lot of our athletes were also they were at the away games, boys track was at away center Mariches. I don't know how long the boys track meet is, but um, the girls lacrosse. varsity lacrosse was in Sayville, boys varsity baseball was in Sayville. And many of the students that were at those games also needed to be here at Honor Society. Baseball is at least two hours, 4.30 game in Sayville. I know some students couldn't even come because they were torn between playing the game, and at that game, uh, Sayville, a boy broke his leg and right snapped the tip, the right half, waiting for the ambulance. And if your pitchers aren't pitching like a no-hitter, you could be switching pitchers. It could be a very long game. So, but my point, I wanted to find out how that gets set up. Is it like a Section 11 thing? Yeah. It's Section 11. So they just say it, that well, these are the days the games are on? What we did and what we can attempt to do should that happen again. Mr. Long brought that to our attention pretty early because the two sons are attracting. And I have baseball. Honest, sorry, that, <laughs> that we did get some of the coaches to move the time, starting times up. And maybe we can, when we find that it happens to match against the calendar, we can work on that. But we can't control section. Okay, so I wasn't sure if that was section 11. I just wanted to see if we could try to prevent it for next year. Because it was like you feel torn. Another suggestion is that at the 
high school, we tend to start things at 7, and we've seemingly done that across the board. That particularly in the spring sports, when, when this is all happening, 7.30 for what was an hour program gives you that extra half hour to possibly have a commute and, and make it time. Good suggestion. It wouldn't have been this year, though. No. <laughs> but just to try to get home, shower, whatever, right. but some of them just came cleaned up with a suit on, and that was fine, too. Yeah. But just to yeah. see if next year we need to yeah, back I that. I think a later story might work. But the same thing happened with my son when he was still in school. <coughs> and I just took him from, I think we were at uh, That's what we John did. Glenn, yeah. you know, flying. And, you know, made yeah. it in time with a little uh, Put this know, on in the powder. car. And, <laughs> yeah. So. Right. Okay. And because they are older, maybe we could start it later. Yeah. You know, and it's a For quick, sure. kind of a, a quick short program. program. And yeah. it wouldn't, you know, end any later than a concert or something like okay. that. Okay. Thank you. Idea. Thanks. Fred. Go ahead, Fred. Two questions. Go. Um, are, there, are there any updates to looking into the BOCES program and some of the things that some parents were looking at for aeronautics, et cetera? Yes. We had passed that uh, back around November or December to add BOCES into the program. Um, that was they're subjected to now science process, mm -hmm. they have to be subjected to BOCES. They also have to attend a few events at BOCES to indicate that they're really serious. Mm -hmm. So um, initially, when we threw it out there, when the board voted it, we had, including the special ed, which have been known, but we had 28 applicants. When it came down to reality and having to attend, we went down to roughly 21. So we did send over 21. There are three aviation whose averages go between 90 and 95. I'm sure they'll be accepted. We have a few who have to meet the needs. There are some attendance and some great issues, but we sent them over because at times that particular occupation training can turn a kid on and make them want to succeed. So, you know, we did it, and I appreciate that the board okayed that. Certainly. Um, so, how much did you have like? The 21 was like yeah. 9, was smaller than that? Yeah, but yeah. So, the majority of that is, is a special ed population that has been going for years anyway. Okay. So, that, you know, Brad, the thing I witnessed in, in why my former district, they, they implemented six CTE programs there at the high school, was because a lot of kids didn't like to leave their school for half or more of the day. And, um, you know, so that's the drive over. And so they, they think about that, some drop out because of that. Mm -hmm. So, but it's just starting. I'm hoping it starts up and we're successful with that opportunity. Okay. Um, my other question was uh, related to Port Jeff. And with their bond vote failing and proposition of them losing a lot of funding from changes in the power plant. Or, or have you guys heard anything about possibility of structural changes in their district, like closing their high school and maybe splitting up their kids to Mount you know, Sinai, et cetera? Now, this, that superintendent, I worked with for 10 years, so we converse all the time, and uh, I'll see him again next week. That has not come up at all. He, um, they are very concerned, as is Northport running meetings, parent meetings in North Port too, facing the same thing will ever happen. But I don't think Port Jeff, there's a long history here, as you know about Port Jeff, Mount Sinai. So uh, that'll be delicate, I think, <laughs> as I'm being like that, delicate. Right. But I think some of those things were really rumors that, you know, people said, hey, what if we did this? But I don't think anybody's approached anybody at this Yeah, this, point. Is, this is a live feed, and that's a rumor, and that we don't want to even go anywhere near that. We're talking about the Mount Sinai budget for Mount Sinai kids. Yeah, it just my, my, to me it just relates to Mount Sinai in, in that if something happens to Port Jeff, and I think there was some discussion a number of months ago about states the, can split things up under emergency situations, and if 
Fort Jeff had to send kids to Mount Sinai, that would obviously impact our budget, our district, our programs, etc. We're kind of really far off in that because they have litigation they're involved in right now, and, and you know that that has, that has to be settled first before they even know what they're going to do themselves. There. Okay. So I would think we're really coming up really far. Anyone that's speculating is is just speculation. Okay, that's fair enough. Nothing we presented in the budget in the third or fourth proposition is all about what Mount Sinai needs and the Mount Sinai community. It has nothing to do with any rumor or speculation. We have no plans presently or in the future that would address any of that. That's Fort Jefferson's burden. I wish them well in that, but this is what we have to do, and that's what we're doing. So, for you here, um, and all of you out there, um, we are urging you to tell everybody you know to vote. We are also asking you to explain what we've, Rosdale has explained and everybody has added to, with the four propositions. The first two are the same as every year. Budget, we presented under the tax cap and the library services, that is a, sort of a given. The third one, if I could sort of simplify it, it's we're asking your permission to take money that we have in our savings account and we just want to move it into our checking account so we can make these emergency repairs on our roof, our turf, and our track. I and yes, thank you. Um, I think I've said it before, I walk this campus all the time and I'm, you know, we have three beautiful buildings, but things are starting to crumble here and there as age sets in. So those need to be done. ASAP. The other fund is going to be asking your permission to take a, from another savings account and earmark it for future expenditures on capital projects, construction, things like that. As I said, the bones are good, but things are starting to shift a little, so we may need down the road to make other repairs. So again, it's money that is already in this district savings accounts. We're just looking to transfer it one for now and one for the future. Amen. Anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Ed. Any comments? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you very much for coming out tonight.